part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look, look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Crypto the Super Dog. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Worldwide, and you're listening to the Krypton Report. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, Caped Wonder, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope podcast. Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast, the only podcast you need to listen to when you're tired because we'll bore the crap out of you. Not really. We'll just soothe you to sleep with the luscious, sweet sounds of the har voices. That's right. Oh, I'm yeah. your host. <laughs> oh, yeah. Play a name, Gus. I am your host, Tyler. The rainforest winds that you're listening to. And with me on smooth jazz time is James, the Superman Red Cole. Hi, James. What's up? Hey, Tyler. How's it going? I really don't think of this. I don't think of this stuff beforehand. I just like whatever happens. But hey, we're the Krypton Report podcast. Thanks for joining us. It's um, random, off the cuff. I know. I always, I, I, I get a thrill of just what can I do to catch James off guard? And there's a lot of stuff that happens before we get on mic that uh, I can just say that makes James chuckle. And um, that's that's why I do it, people. That's why I'm here. We are part of the Press Play Podcast Network, and we like to talk about DC Comics, specifically Superman, because he is our favorite, our champion, our hero, and just an all-around good guy, and that's what we strive to be. And uh, as I said, I'm Tyler, the man of the Superman of tomorrow, the Superman of blue, because James and I can't figure out who's Superman and who's not, so we picked him in blue and red. Oh, yeah, blue and red. They're two, they're two different ones. Yeah, there's some difference if you read that comic, you know, that a lot of people forget existed or don't admit actually happened. There's uh, some cool stuff in there. And, yeah, they did kind of, even though he was split, give him a little bit different personalities. And I think it works out quite well for us. As uh, James says, uh, boistering with rage and testosterone. And I'm just catching up with my emotional side as I sit back, curl up with a good book. <laughs> If you've, if you've ever seen role models, James is more like Sean William Scott's character of Wheeler, and I'm Paul Rudd. <laughs> the boss. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we got some DC news. Not much, but we got a little bit. Uh, we're going to kick off with, let's see, what do I have here? Not a whole lot, but really not a lot. We'll start with uh, this one. So today we saw as this recording that the very, very crappy Aquaman King of the Sea cartoon is being removed from HBO Max. No loss there. No. Um, yeah, we – I mean we – I know you and me, we both try to um, watch as, as much content as we can, um, you know, past and present and – but – um, yeah, I couldn't really, I couldn't, I could not get into it. Um, the kids could not get into it. Um, and that's the problem. Like right nobody there. could get into it that I know or have heard of or talked to. Cause it was just garbage. I mean, I'm like, it has that crappy adventure time style animation. Oh, it's and- worse. And I remember when they announced they were going to just animate series and we were all like, pumped and then we saw uh the first images were like what is this like is this a joke and sadly it was not a joke well you know i mean when they first announced it jason momoa was supposed to voice aquaman we can clearly see why he didn't 
he didn't want to be associated with that garbage. It was right. it was terrible. It looks like Amber Heard made it. Oh. <laughs> Came off of the bed. It's got scraped <laughs> right off of the bed. Oh, <laughs> uh, but man, I'm telling you. Solomon was like, "Well, daddy, let's let's just try." And I'm like, "All right, buddy. No problem, you know." I always use my kids as kind of a a barometer here to help me kind of see. And we started it and we got like, you, I can just watch their face. They were losing interest. And we they're like, yeah, let's do something else. And we went and did it. And I was like, we can come back to it. But they're like, yeah, we never came back. No, I, we put it on to try and watch it and we didn't like it at all. Um, and we even had the four year old sit down with us to watch it and she didn't like it either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> so that's that's that. You know, they're cleaning up over there and um yeah, they're doing what they gotta do. And it'll probably one day have a cult following of being some mysterious series that got removed and no one can watch it and people will romanticize and fantasize about it and uh yeah it'll resurface like years down the line Um, well you know they'll probably i mean i don't know but i mean who knows they might drop it on some kind of dvd just to get a kind of uh but i don't even know if it's gonna be if it would sell if it would be worth the uh distribution costs you know what i'm saying so like nobody I was thinking, watched it on on freaking HBO Max. So, because I was thinking like they haven't put out like I just bought Titan season one. Like I have I hadn't bought season one. I bought season two when it came out because that Superboy in it, and I found season one um, cheap. So I bought season one, and I was thinking to myself, they haven't released physical copy of season three yet, have they? Not that I not that I've seen. And same thing for Doom Patrol, I don't think. I know season two had a, a physical release. Oh yeah. Season one and two both did. See I don't I have Swamp Thing. I I now have both seasons of Titans, which were the ones that aired on DC Universe. And I don't have Doom Patrol. It's on my huge master list of DC stuff to purchase. So I just was wondering, because I'm even thinking about, um, I need to buy Stargirl. That's on my list to find. And, and uh, I always buy a lot of TV seasons and stuff on Black Friday time. Because you can get them for like 12 bucks, 10 bucks. Um, I'm thinking about with the new season of Stargirl coming here on the th- next week or the week after, 31st, I think. I'm thinking about just buying it on iTunes. And not dealing with the CW app. I don't want to support the CW anymore. I know, except when it comes like Superman Lois or something. But I know that's horrible. Um, just because we did learn that the CW has been sold to Nexstar. And, like, I, I just have a feeling that the CW is not going to want to do Superman and Lois. And this is the end of the CW. I'm just, after this year, it's I'll probably never watch it again. Uh, because the flash is ending. He's going out. That's fine. You know, it's not nine seasons. That's a run, you know, like that's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, so the flash is going out and that just leaves basically star girl and Superman and Lois, the only, you know, DC property shows. And the way that they were talking about their plan for what they wanted to do with the network. Um, they're going to get some premium. Well, how they word it? like premium syndication and stuff. And they want to kind of change up their demographic. So that means they'll probably get rid of the CW app and that whole like younger mind and dramas. And if they don't move like Superman to Lois to like HBO max or something like that, I have a bad feeling that this might be the last season, but, and not because it's a bad show, just because nobody knows what the heck they're doing, you know? Yeah, I mean, a lot of business uh, transactions happening, you know. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot. There, it got spread pretty thin. You know what I mean? They, it was they were putting DC 
in every corner, but nobody was communicating and nobody could even keep their house in line. So, right. I mean, the closest thing was the Arrowverse, which had its, you know, ebbs and flows. It had, it had its dips and rises. Um, but you know, it's, and and we, we talked about this in our chat, you know, like, it's it kind of sucks when shows like that like the ones on the CW they they kind of just get a room full of writers and just to crank out material not necessarily people who have a passion for the project mm-hmm. so you get mediocre material aimed at a specific demographic and that's what's that's what they're focused on as opposed to telling a story, a good story aimed, you know, aimed at, you know, the fans of said characters. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're absolutely correct. And that's why I just, I worry about Superman and Lois just being like in the fallout of all this, you know, we know at least we're going to have season three, but speaking of Superman and Lois, this came as a big shocker and it kicked to the face. Mm-hmm. Um, Jordan Ellis, whose name literally is Jor-El, is leaving Superman and Lois. He is the actor known for playing Jonathan. He is leaving. And he will be recast. That's what I think is interesting is they're going to recast him. Yeah. I kind of... I kind of wish they'd find a way to write him off the show for now. Um, but I don't know. Like they do such a good job with both brothers, you know, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. And I've read, a, I read a lot of it's for mental health reasons, just him. And there was no ill will, will against the show or work related problems. Um, yeah, the article that I read was just, it just said personal reasons, um, which, you know, I mean, if, if like mental health was to be, then, you know, that's more important. Um, but the, yeah, it says no, you know, it says states no ill will from, you know, production, no ill will from the personal side. Just So, yeah, it does kind of suck. You know, that, that he, cause I enjoyed his character. He, he did a good job and they built a rapport as parents to son and brothers. Um, so just, you know, to recast him, to bring somebody else in, it's going to be a bit of a shock. Um, I mean, we just roll with it. We've been here before, you know, they could have done that and did used who they did like, like back with Batgirl. But they, you mean Batwoman? Batwoman, yeah. Batwoman, I mean. Yeah, that they, was stupid. They did what they did. They hired exactly who we said they should hire. I know I did. <laughs> they yeah. hired exactly who I said they should hire to be the character, but they did it too late and wrote her out of the show. <laughs> it was stupid. I mean, they were trying to have their their cake, their pie, and their ice cream and eat it and other things with it. So it it was messed up. Well, you know, I mean, it's kind of that idea we said, you know, not not really having a passion for the project. You know, they they wanted to tell I don't, you know, I don't, I don't I don't go for that word or anything. You know, I don't go for that word and you know, I mean, I, I may have a beard but I'm not a neck bearded misogynist on the internet <laughs> talking yeah. about everything that's woke, but that's kind of what they were more focused on telling. Well, I mean, we talked about story. we talked a little bit about how Supergirl became a side character in her own show. Yeah, and, and Batwoman basically became a side character in her show, too. So... But yeah, Jonathan is, uh, he's leaving and that's going to be a hard hard for a lot of us fans to deal with. Um, well, we'll do our best to, you know, go with the flow and, and hopefully the, hopefully the new person will be able to 
uh, we'll, we'll be able to have the a, a good chemistry with yeah. with uh, the family dynamic. You know, that's the that's the most important part when it comes to the show that that um, that the dynamic doesn't change too uh, too bad. Yeah, and maybe they'll have an actor whose name isn't one of the characters. <laughs> that that might help with our conversation. But anyways, we wish him the best. And, you know, at the end of the day, like we always say, like, you got to take care of yourself, you know, and family comes first. So, like, there's, you know, that's what's got to happen. So, the next thing is the forgotten DC show that nobody remembered existed because it was on Epics, Pennyworth, season three is premiering October 6th. But now Pennyworth has a subtitle, The Origins of Batman's Butler. Uh, I, it's unnecessary. Once again, <laughs> they have to use Batman to sell it. And it's just like we talked about when we did our recent discussions on movies. Where it was like Batman Soul of the Dragon or Batman Assault on Arkham. Where it's really not a Batman project. But because Batman gets people's attention, they throw him out there for everything. So, yeah. Why not just officially just call it like the Gotham prequel? You know? Yeah. And just go with that. But I'm interested to see what they do with Pennyworth. Just because there was a very unique um, twist that happened at the end of last season. And I'm just kind of curious what's going to happen with that. Yeah. Um, you know, the origins of Batman's Butler. That's terrible. Because um, Bruce yes. isn't even born. You know? Yes, it is. Like, yes, it is. <laughs> Like, it has nothing to do with even Bruce Wayne. Um, uh, you know, that, that kind of bugs me, honestly. Um, <laughs> he's, he's like, this, he's like, you know what? Let's, let's just make this an explicit episode. Tyler hit that pause. Yeah. Hold on. I'm like, like composing myself real quick. Um, <laughs> It yeah, it just it bugs me. Like, I I think the show clearly the show was was strong enough on its own that they brought it from Epics, which is a much smaller um, viewing venue. So many people didn't even know that there was a channel called Epics when the show was coming out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It was so and weird it that it enough, ended up there. Yeah, and it's enough that they. Are pulling that they pulled it over to HBO Max. The entire thing, seasons one and two, which aired on Epics, and now season three is being on HBO. So clearly, it found an audience, and uh, it's just either way. The trailer look is just a teaser trailer, so there were some pretty quick glimpses, pretty quick clips. Um, I like I've liked the guy who played him. Um, oh, I, I like Jack Bannon who Jack plays Bannon, yeah, young Alfred, like. I like him a lot. Like, you know, like I've said in the past, I watched uh, almost the entire first season. I don't think I finished it. I think I was only two episodes from the end. Um, but uh, it was really good. I really did enjoy it. I thought it was great. And then, um, so I want to catch up on the show before season three drops. Um, what's interesting, I you know, knowing that, the heads of Warner Brothers and everything were trying to focus on streaming. It makes sense why they brought it over and the fact because they're trying to get all of DC under one house, which makes me think like with the selling of the CW, maybe we'll start to see some of that stuff that's on like the CW seed filter over. You know, like I'm thinking of Constantine. Constantine you know? and Krypton. Yeah, like... Well, that isn't isn't Krypton's HBO Max? Is I thought it, it was. Did it, did it get over there? I thought it did. I mean, you know, I, I, I'll look while we're while we're here discussing. 
there's this handy dandy thing we have called the internet. Yeah. And apps. <laughs> or the app on my phone. <laughs> Um, I mean, Krypton is a great show, you know what I mean? And it's really, mm-hmm. it's, it's one show, uh, it does not appear, it does not appear that it is on here. Um, really? I thought it was. It is, def- it is one show that is, was really good, that it's sad that it, uh, ended the way it did on season two, uh, with a cliffhanger ending. Unfortunately, that's kind of what you get with um, sci-fi, though. You know, a lot of those shows. So, yeah, I just, it would be really, it's it's probably a little too late for it now, but, you know, it'd be great if we got to see it (laughs) revived, but unlikely in this, especially with the shakeups going on. Mhm. I thought I had. Mm, now I'm frustrated. Anyways, um, yeah, I totally forgot what I was gonna say, but that's okay. So yeah, it would be nice if like it'd be actually it'd be great if they put Swamp Thing back on. Yeah, that would be that would be really good. Um. Especially if if the rumors are true, because we know that you know nothing's been officially um, said. The Justice League Dark or Constantine. There's still some things that are that are have have all these projects that have been announced over the last few years um, uh, that have been in in early stages of production. Uh, since obviously all the cancellations and everything, uh, mm-hmm. people have spoken out saying that they're still working on things. Um, and then there was something very recently about um, Swamp Thing and potentially the cast um, coming back. Yeah, but I, I don't, I don't trust anything. Do I see more? Uh, I, yeah, I mean we don't. I mean that's just a hope. I really enjoyed that show. I have it on Blu-ray. I have the season. Uh, yeah, digitally. that was one. That, it's really that was one I bought too, um, because I was like, I need this one, and oh, especially I, since it's all we got, like, definitely yeah. have to have it in the library. It's Swamp Thing. It's man. Derek Mears, man. He kicked ass. Yeah. So, all right, let's uh, let's break it down, James. Let's break it down. Break it let's down. Get in, wicked, wicked. What? Yeah. Let's get in <laughs> some let's get into some comics, man. Hey man. You gotta get out of here. We really gotta go, man. Gotta go to these comics. That's my Jim Gordon impression. So Alright, what right. do you wanna start what do you wanna start with? Mm, that's a yeah, man. That's a good question. Last point that, beyond, or did you say you had DC War of the Undead Gods? No, I, I, I just I, I, I checked out pretty early on. Uh, the on what do you call East. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I just it just I came at a time I just wasn't re- I just wasn't in the mood for that for DC zombies. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like you know what I'm over all this and. It's still going on, and I'm like, okay. So, yeah, well, it's it's the fourth and final chapter in the Deceased um, series, which is actually, you know, what's really cool about it is Tom Taylor is still, um, is still writing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, when yeah. it came to uh, Injustice, he stopped uh, about the middle of year three, I think. Okay. Um, and, and injustice was picked up by somebody else. Um, but this one, he's, he's going all the way through. And honestly, you know what? You probably don't know because you did stop. Um, 
but in the end of uh, what was the last series um, for deceased uh, there's unkillables hope hope at world's end I believe yeah hope at world's end um, where they um, found a cure for the um, for the anti-life virus that's that was creating all of these like zombies mm-hmm. so I mean you 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 saw that Superman went down right yeah yeah you saw that Superman went down he took he took a, a, a rib from a zombie flash and it and it it, it infected him um, well Superman as a zombie um, flew into the center of the sun kind of like the last thing he could do to like save everybody before he went you know like crazy and mm-hmm. killed everybody so it kind of like he, he took himself out of the equation kind of a thing. Um, well, five years later, he's still in there. And Jonathan flies in there uh, to, um, to administer the cure to him. And it's pretty awesome because they talk about, like, they say a being powered by solar energy had been absorbing a son for five years. He was faster and stronger than anyone could imagine. Talk about uh, Green Canary used the greatest weapon in the universe to hold the unliving man of steel. He shattered it like glass. Uh, Between the strength of the heroes holding Clark, there was enough raw power to shift the planet from its orbit, and they could still barely contain him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The first issue is pretty sweet. All right. So, I don't know. Maybe you want to jump back into it, but. I might. There is that lovely app that we have. There is. Yeah. You should definitely ch- uh, catch up there. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, I don't know what I was going to say. I'm sorry. I totally forgot this. This is exciting. So, we got a couple of new McFarlane figures. Okay. We got the Dwayne Johnson Black Adam one with the with the cloak. You can find that video on our YouTube. It's hilarious because Solomon does a little promo for Zoa during it. And encourages everyone to drink Zoa and be like Black Adam. It's adorable. <laughs> I see uh, that. I'm I'm being like Black Adam drinking my uh, Terramana tequila. See, I'm being like Black Adam and invested in Zoa with blood and money. Um, <laughs> And then the other thing is <clears throat> we got the um, the super – I totally forgot I pre-ordered the Superman Barbarian figure. Um, and we just call it the James Cole action figure. <laughs> In the future state Superman gladiator figure? Yes. Yeah. So when that video drops on YouTube with that unboxing in the notes, it says the James Cole action figure. No. <laughs> uh, uh, and then I meant to, I meant to say that at the at the start. And the other thing I wanted to say is I po- wanted to point out is so Jeannie and I just finished the first season of Sandman yesterday, and it was cool. I enjoyed it. I've ne- I've had issues struggling trying to get into the Sandman before at times, finding part of it fascinating and parts of it like, huh. Um, but I will say the thing that I felt that they did at the show a big disservice was just it's weird it's on Netflix, and it's weird that they stripped out so much of the DC stuff, like references and people. I mean, they even – like gender swap John Constantine. Actually, from what I understand, that's John Constantine's grandmother. Nope. Because no? even no, it's not. Because that's what I told Jania. Because there is a character that's like his grandmother, 
or great grandmother. Yeah, and isn't that her name? Yes, and she's in the series too. Oh. So we see, we see, because then I was like, because they do the whole Astrid thing with Joanna Constantine. So I'm like, so well, I'm watching. I'm like, they just straight up just gender swapped Constantine. Because I was wondering, like, because he references, I knew a Constantine once. And I was like, okay, maybe they're going to do something. And then it was Lady Joanna Constantine that he meets in the past. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. And it was interesting because also they went with the British, I guess, proper pronunciation where it's Constantine. Yeah. And I was like, uh, so I was like, it's so weird to hear it that way. But then I said, you know, we were, and then we were talking, I was like, it's Constantine. Like it's probably John. weird for Constantine, Constantine. <laughs> and Je- and Jenny's like, oh, yeah, Keanu. Oh, like, that's right. Keanu's Constantine, and then <laughs> she's Constantine, and Matt Ryan's Constantine and Teen. I mean, he can be both, whatever. <laughs> so you know, we will go with Keanu for the Americanized version. But I just want to throw that there. If anyone's interested in the series, if you're interested in the series, watch up to episode six, and then. It kind of gets like soft rebooted in a weird kind of way for the last seven, eight, and nine, and ten. Hmm. Um, but season yeah, six is the, the high list, point. I would love to uh, watch it and talk about it when when I get there. Um, Se- season uh, season um, or episode six is the high point. It's very, it's very good. Okay. Um, yeah, I definitely would. I definitely want to watch it and talk about it when I get there. Um, the uh, speaking of Constantine, though, or Constantine, um, very interesting thing I heard. So I got to check it out, just to throw it out there. Um, <clears throat> we know House of Mysteries, what happened there in the end of House of Mysteries. Yeah. Um, so apparently, the hobo um, in Beware My Power. Um, I don't, I didn't really pay that much attention to like what he had to say. Cause he sounded, you know, they made him look and sound like a drunk, gibbering, crazy hobo. Yeah. Um, but from the stuff he says it, and he's got a, he's got a, an accent. He could be like a crazy like brought back to this world, Constantine potentially might be something I have to look at closer. Hmm. I, hmm, I thought about like, he's somebody, but okay. We'll, uh, we'll uh, investigate, but Hey, we got some comments to talk about. We're just fluffing. <laughs> so we need to move forward. Let's pick a book. Oh, you know what? Since you talked about yours, I'm going to talk about one. The league of super pets, free comic book. It was a good fun read. Some really cute humor to it. Super Pets, we will talk about one day when James gets to watch it. Poor guy, hasn't got to see it yet. I'm sad. Yeah, I know. So are my children. It was was not my plan to not have seen it yet. So whenever uh, James sees it, there'll be a big discussion. Uh, Look for a small review coming um, from the children here shortly. But yeah, that was a cool comic. And just want to throw that out there and rub it in your face. We saw Super Pets because I'm a douche. <laughs> but <laughs> let's look at Flashpoint Beyond, number three of six, or four of six. Let me ask you this question, James. Do, should comics have a zero issue? I don't necessarily think that they need one. Um, I, I honestly I was thinking about this. I don't like it. Just just make it a seven issue arc, and s- issue zero is number one. Right. Because because it it definitely leads into the story and is kind of needed. And if you're coming into this later, you might not know there's as issue zero. Yeah, I don't think that it's necessary. I mean, I guess it's kind of a creative way to be like. I guess if you're writing something and you start at one and you go through, you know, whatever, four, five, six, and then you drop an issue zero and you jump back to like the prologue, something that happened before the story started that didn't, that 
you didn't want revealed before that point, you know? But mm-hmm. in that case, I still think that it's just, it can just be an issue um, that's a, a flashback, uh, you know? Like, uh, the next issue is just a prologue issue. Um, I mean, I just read, I don't know, con- uh, Spawn like 3.30 or something, 3.31, and honest, and that issue is basically something that takes you back, takes the story back long before issue one. And it's issue 330 something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it takes you way back millennia, 3000 years or something before it even started. Something that wasn't, that wasn't known before that. I was like, and it was a really awesome issue. Like, it's not like they jump back and like, oh, this is an issue zero. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think it's quite necessary. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It's a. Uh... Yeah. Anyways, let's talk about this. James, you want to take that? You want to take point on this? Which book is this? <laughs> Flashpoint four. Ah, okay. Flashpoint four. I can do that. Let me get it out here. That's what she said. <laughs> of course she did. <laughs> <laughs> um so we open up in Arkham Asylum. Um just uh uh Mrs. Dent. Is this, is her name Gilda in this? I forget. Yeah. Okay. It's Gilda. Um, she is in her, uh, she's just in her, her, um, in her cell talking. Uh, Thomas Wayne, Batman, is performing an autopsy on the reverse flash. Uh, we found out that he was dead. He was murdered. Um, and performing the autopsy, he removes a bunch of clockwork pieces, um, mm. uh, gears and cogs and stuff. Um, Oswald is still taking care of the dent child. Yeah, he is, because he's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, Oswald's a good, he is. Yeah, Oswald's a good guy on, in, Flash, uh, in the Flashpoint world. Um well, he loses track of the kid. Um, he goes down to uh, the Bat Cave, and he changes into a suit, something, <laughs> something like Robin. He's kind of like a little Robin. Not sure what the G R is for. Green Robin. Green Robin, maybe. You know, like Red yeah, Robin. Red Robin, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Red Robin. Yum. <laughs> um, Thomas returns home and Oswald tells him that the kid is missing. Uh, the kid sneaks into Arkham Asylum. Uh, Oswald is like, he he's, he's worried about the kid, you know? Um, and Thomas is not having it. He's not focused on it. You know, he's, he's focused on the problem at hand, uh, living in a world that shouldn't exist. Um, why all of these people were killed, um, people who were potential, potential heroes and stuff. Um, psycho pirate, why he had, uh, killed himself. Um, you know, because he, Psycho Pirate remembers things from the from previous incarnations of the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so yeah, he the the kid sneaks into Arkham Asylum, and <laughs> he he knocks some people out. Which, like, how did this kid? kind of do what he does. I guess Oswald's been teaching him a lot. 
Uh, mm. He certainly taught him about guns and things, and then the kid was wanting explosives. Um, hmm, of course of a, he does. <laughs> yeah, wanting to learn about explosives and everything. Um, and there's there's a parallel here. They got a nice page, which is kind of cool, a parallel of Thomas working over his clockwork parts, um, putting it all together. And uh, as the kid is breaking into um, and trying to open his mother's cell, um, Dexter is his name. Uh, he finds his mother. He sees uh, he sees what happened to her, and he's shocked. Um, he hears uh, he hears a voice that's talking to his mother. And, uh, um, let's see. Yeah, the, so he's talking to his mother, and then Thomas, he, he puts everything, he puts the clock back together, and there's still a piece. And he realizes where the piece had come from. It was a, a piece from the clock upstairs in the mansion. Which is trippy. Yeah. So it's it's the same clock. Um, he says the grandfather clock has been broken for too many years to count. It was a wedding gift, and in his mo- in Dexter's mother's cell, the door opens, and Martha Wayne comes out. Martha's Joker <laughs> is revealed inside Arkham Asylum. Which is really cool, you know, just to get to see her character, um, because in the Flashpoint books, we got to see that she was um, the Joker, and, like, we got to see one thing that she had done, and hear of some other stuff, but she wasn't really a character, you yeah. know? She didn't play much of a part, even in the, uh, even in the, uh, all the tie-in books, the tie-in stories. Um, so it's kind of cool that she gets to come back. Yeah, it is. Uh, then we get her laughing and the snow blow, the snow globe, the, the snow globe that we've seen and Jane, uh, Jenny Slater's watch, uh, starts to crack and, um, uh, light up and the kid here. Um, I forget who it is. I know we I know we discussed who it was before. He's he's one of the um, one of the time. Um, what do they call him? Daniel Boone, the time <laughs> Daniel Boone. That's what I. Call. That's, yeah, that's nah. what you call him. Uh, he well, he's like he's like rich, um, like Ryder and stuff. Um, Not to be confused with Paw Patrol's Ryder. <laughs> no, like Wave Rider, um, like uh, Rip, Rip Hunter. Rip Hunter, yeah. Uh, the time I, I forget what they call him now. Um, Not the Time the, Lords. No, is it? It's no. something to do with time. They police time, and I just I can't remember the the term the the specific term you know in DC. <laughs> Uh, but he says that's blue shift power. It's created when the omniverse comes into direct contact with hypertime, when space meets time. It's the most dangerous energy on either side of the divine continuum. Well, um, he says, surprise, awesome. you didn't know that. Which is, you know, it's always fun to catch uh, Bruce not knowing things, you know? Mm hmm. He says, why is it doing this? So now you're asking me for help. He says, Dr. Hunter makes me do a book report every week, so I'm awfully literate for a kid kid my age, which is usually the kind of thing you get beat up for. He says, that's why I like being homeschooled. You ever read Shakespeare's The Tempest? Yeah, of course you did. So you know there's a big storm like the one in that snow globe, and all these awful people get stuck on a deserted island where lots of bad things happen to them. It's not as fun as Swiss Family Robinson, which is one of my top five favorites, but it's not all that. Uh, like, there are some neat quotes, like, wombs have born bad sons. Of course, the other way around is true, too. 
I mean, your mom, she had a lot of secrets, had a lot of problems, things you don't know about, things from her past, things you didn't realize your dad was going to have to face in there. You see, I warned you, Batman, I really did. You don't know everything about everything this time. You don't know the truth about your mom. To be continued in the secret of Flashpoint Beyond. It kind of seems like the Flashpoint universe is now exists inside the globe or something. Yeah, I'm Perhaps. kind of. Uh, I, I'm I'm just guessing here, maybe. I was uh, kind of leaning that way too. But the idea um, of, well, the reason the kid's talking about his mom and the re- and you know she shows up two pages before, and then the and then the snow globe starts cracking and lighting up. There's got to be some correlation there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Some. Some. Just maybe. A little bit. Just li- just a little bit. Just a little bit, says James. But yeah, I don't know. I, I it's I feel like this story is one of those that when it's done, I'm gonna go back and just read it straight. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's got a good mystery going on, you know? It it reveals only a tiny bit each time. And and like we talked about, I hope it's not like Dr. Manhattan. Like, it'd be something like that. Like, so. I don't know. I'm enjoying it. Um, I mean, I almost feel like his name is such burden, but it's nice to have Jeff Johns writing comics again. Yeah, he's always been good at writing comics, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, yay. I mean, I just heard something today that uh, he's going to be writing a new JS book. Stargirl, yeah. Yeah, with Stargirl. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, well, hey. Sounds like we had a good time there with that one. It's like I said, it's thought provoking. And once it's done, I think it'd be really cool to kind of sit back and be like, ha, okay. Didn't see that coming. Did not see that coming. I don't know. What do you think? Um, I mean, yeah, I was, I was shocked. Uh, you know, I, I was wondering, like the voices because Gilda has been, she's been a big part of the story. Um, and she's been like hearing the voices and stuff. And I thought that maybe it might be like some split personality, you know? Well, I mean, because, yeah, because she's basically two faced. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but that's not the case. Um, the voices she was hearing wasn't, it wasn't like voices she was hearing. It wasn't voices in her head. It was the Joker. She was there. Mm -hmm. So, um, pretty cool reveal. Um, like I said, thought provoking still, still don't know what's going on. Four issues in still don't know, um, what we're driving to. So, I'm looking forward to the mystery being revealed. Hopefully we'll have a better idea issue five. Um, I mean, you, the, the, you just hate to see, like, because each issue has been pretty good, you know? Mm-hmm. But issue one and two, you got a lot of story. You got a lot of compelling things happening. People dying. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And then... You know, some of these stories, and I don't think this is one of them, you know, each issue has had enough of it, but, um, you know, some stories, then you get like three issues of nothing and then, and then they just, then they cram all of it into one. It's like, you, you only, you only had enough story for three issues. Why? (laughs) Like, but you had to stretch it to six. Yep. So. I look forward to this. All right, what's next? What you want to do next? I'm letting you take the lead. 
Um, which one next? The next one I've got in my hand here is... Let's do World's Finest. All right. World's Finest number five. World's Finest. The World's Finest for James Cole. And Tyler. Don't forget Tyler. So we jump back in where... um, uh, they are in the tomb of the devil Neza. And they're talking, Supergirl has revealed to them that the only way is for somebody to remain, in the, the only way to trap him is for somebody to remain um, locked inside with him. The Doom Patrol says that they're expendable. It's in their name. Um, this is true. Yeah. Well, it kind of is part of why they're called the Doom Patrol, you know? I think they, I think in a number of stories, they, they end up dying. Um, but I've never read much, or I've never read any Doom Patrol, so maybe I'm just going by what I've heard. Uh, Supergirl is saying that she deserves to be locked in there, um, because she lost Robin, um, Somewhere in the time stream, which is which is not cool, Supergirl. Well, it kind of wasn't her fault, you know what I mean. I was what I'm saying, but I mean, like, just because that happened doesn't mean you deserve to be locked, you know? Like, yeah. Well, you you know them, you know them, uh, Kryptonians. They always take the weight of the world on their shoulders, even if it, even if there's nothing they could have done to prevent it. It's true, we do, don't we? Um, yes, we do. Uh, so the devil Neza, he takes control of Superman. Um, he's able to possess Superman at this point. Um, sends Superman on the attack, and Supergirl jumps in the way. She she jumps in the middle. Um, then we got the Doom Patrol. Um, uh, the Doom Patrol heading out, uh, trying to attack, and then we see that um, uh, that the Devil Nizza has taken the Doom Patrol. Right? That's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I, I read this a while ago. This, this book's he's, been out for a little while. so He's basically taken everybody. Yeah. Um, they're all... They're all basically at this point now fighting like Batman and Supergirl. Um, but, uh, yeah. But, uh, uh, Robot Man is not, um, uh, he's not taken over. He's not possessed. Um, and then Supergirl remembers, uh, his sorceress defense, uh, defenses were designed to adapt to any attack from every known science, every known force, every known element of this earth. Uh, so known. So what he doesn't know is robotics. So he, he doesn't, he can't control, uh, robot man, at least as of yet. That's awesome. Um, and then Superman flies off to the fortress of solitude. Um, Neza is fighting everybody. He even, um, he even gets his hands on the negative man, which is pretty interesting. Um, then it says, maybe you can adapt to earth technology, Neza. And Superman says, let's see you try Kryptonian tech on for a size. And he zaps him with the Phantom Zone projector. Which, which I'm reading this, and I'm like, yes. Like I always stupidly yell out, like, if you have someone you can't beat, just put them in the Phantom Zone. <laughs> like, <laughs> I literally say that way too often. Which just happened in a uh, um, Justice League issue I read. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a uh, great default. It is. It actually turned it in, in that one. It it had a nice story twist there. Um, I'll have to tell you that one. That's not the book we're talking about right now. Nope. Um. So yeah, they uh they sent him, uh, they sent him to the Phantom Zone, and Kara says on our on our way back from uh, the past, Robin and I hit a time storm. It jolted us hard, and Robin, I tried to hold on, I swear, but Robin lost his grip and fell into the time stream. It's where, when? That's just it. There's absolutely no way of knowing he could be literally anywhere in the past, anywhere, and we have no. Way to ever find him. Oh, excuse me. Yep. Um, uh, Robin, we'll figure it out. We always do. Kind of like all oh, the ever, ever the optimist, right? Mm-hmm. Um, no, which is good. You know, Superman, Superman has those moments, uh, where, he, where he is, uh, the ultimate optimist. But, you know, I, and I think in, Anyways, we'll continue. Uh, <laughs> and Neza starts to crack open the Phantom Zone. Um, uh, you know, he, he starts, he tries escaping. Um, Kal-El grabs, um, like, the Phantom Zone mirror. Yeah, and he fly he, he flies Neza into the tomb and slams it shut. Um, like Batman's like no, like he's he's yelling, he's screaming. <laughs> he's like no, Superman can't be locked in there with him. Um, and I thought this part was pretty cool. Yeah, it's his, uh, it's gone. Uh, what are you talking about? Is he in shock? Clark, uh, so what are you looking for? He's gone. Rita, where's the Phantom Zone projector? Uh, the Larry, the crack that Neza forced open, it's still there, but it's fading quickly. Uh, do not let it close. Uh, the rest of the team, get ready and follow my lead. Uh, so the negative man opens up the crack from the Phantom Zone. And they reach in and they pull Clark out and they let the thing close. Um, <laughs> Clark says, you took long enough. Batman says, that was a hell of a gamble. He says, I was depending on Batman to notice something that's not a gamble, that's a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Which, not really, but okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's the, that's, I mean, that's the great thing about, like, the world's finest, um, the way this book is written, the way it should be in this book, um, you know, them leaning on each other, even when they don't know the outcome or, or how to get there, they lean on each other. Yeah, they do. Um, cause that's what friends do. Yeah, that's what friends do. Um. He says, I would have been, uh, Neza would have flayed me alive, but I didn't give him time. Before he could tear into me, I escaped the only way I knew how. So he sent himself into the Phantom Zone and then destroyed the projector. Um, and then him and Kara, they bury the tomb. Like, build a mountain on top of the tomb. <laughs> Uh, and it says, next, let's rescue Robin. And that's what we're waiting for. Because, like, this is supposed to be, we talked about this a little bit. It's supposed to be like an ongoing book, isn't it? Like. Yeah, it's not like issue one out of 12 or anything like that. So, but then it's got epilogue, Tomb of Devil Neza, years later. And we've got a Robin a.k.a. Lazarus Island, which is actually very interesting because Damien, in the Robin book, he mm -hmm. was on Lazarus Island. Yeah? Yeah. So I am a few issues behind on my DC Universe reading, my continuity reading there, but 
um, yeah, there is a there was a tournament, a, a fighting tournament that took place on Lazarus Island. So it's kind of interesting that this book takes place there. Hmm. Yeah. I did not know that. Nice little connection there. All right. Do you want to do Son of Kal-El or Action next? Let's do Son of Kal-El. All right. I think save Clark for last. Yeah, just and part of it, I mean, we know that Clark, like this story is building to its conclusion. Like is it next week like the last episode or at last issue before the big like thick special that's like the conclusion? I think so. That that conclusion book is coming up very soon. Cuz I think next week's the actual action issue and then the conclusion book. So all right, Son of Kal-El, 14. Very weird cover. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and it just seems like Jay Nakamura has been one of those characters that everyone draws differently, and if it wasn't for the weird hair, you wouldn't know it was uh, it was Jay. Yeah, if it wasn't for that pink-purplish hair. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. But, um, yeah. So we open up with Lois Lane reporting for the truth. Um, the senator transformed into a monster, attacked Superman. Um, Which was a really cool uh, previous like issue. Yeah. So she's revealing the truth. You know, um, people kidnapped from across the globe, experimented on to give them powers then mind-controlled and weaponized to be sold to the highest bidder. Um, Records of large financial transactions between several governments and corporations to the nation of Gomorrah. So, like, she's really... um, She's really given... uh, Like, she's putting putting Gomorrah and uh, Bendix on Front Street. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Um, it seems as though Bendix might be in outer space. <laughs> he might have a space yeah. station out there. There's something going on, it feels like. Yeah. Deploy the island's storm shield. Um, so he, he, uh, he creates a dome over the entire island nation. Uh, and we see the revolutionaries. Um, some of these characters were from uh, Tom Taylor's Suicide Squad run. Which I need to read when I get a chance. I need to finish it. Um, I read a few issues, you know, because it was Tom Taylor. But when you got to drop some books, you got to drop some books. Yeah, it sucks. That's why I just wait for stuff to come to the app now. Yeah, that's why I only have a, a certain few books that I buy every month. Um, you know, the ones we talk about here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, it's kind of a it's a nice exchange here. Um, you know, the, these, these uh, revolutionaries, they're kind of here for um, revenge. Punishing Bendix for what he did. Um, But Jay says this is about toppling a tyrant and freeing the country. Not necessarily a personal vendetta. Um, Superman says that... uh, Well, we got got Dreamer here. Uh, You dreamed about a giant kryptonite gas man. And Dreamer says, actually, I dreamed it and showed it to him. (laughs) I have so many questions. Um, but Superman says, but I want to, I want to make it clear when the shield come down, comes down, no one dies. He says, that's easy for you to say you can't be killed. If a super powered monster is about to squash one of my people, I will do what's needed. Those super powered monsters are innocents controlled by Henry Bendix. This is a mission to save them as much as the, as, uh, the nation of Gomorrah. She says, a war has casualties. This isn't a war. This is a rescue. We take out the controllers, not the people they control. 
Uh, if you're not good enough to do this without killing, then maybe you're not good enough. Uh, you're not good enough to come with us. <laughs> I think Superman just burned you. Didn't even need heat vision. <laughs> um, uh, somebody says, "Looks like Superman has already made up his mind about us." This is John doesn't prejudge. Trust me. This, this, is, my, this, is, my, this is my favorite part and of the I whole used, thing. And I used to be an assassin. This is Robin. Were you seriously planning on leading an assault on a dictatorship without me? And John gives him a big hug. This is my favorite part. Where the hell did you even come from? He does this. It's it's inf- it's infuriating. We're on a submarine. <laughs> what? Yeah. And what and what's funny is is Superman didn't even know he was there. Like yeah. he got in to a submarine and uh and and John didn't even realize he was there until he spoke up. So I I have not caught up with Damien's Robin stuff that's going on. Though isn't Wade writing the Robin first Batman book? Um, is he? Because I might, I might have to check that out. I'm not. I can't remember who was writing the Robin book. I think the Robin vs. Batman book that's getting ready to come oh, out. The new one that's coming out. It yeah. might be. That's what. Um, that's what the uh, um, the stinger at the end of World's Finest was. So. Um. So yeah, that would actually be really cool. Um. Because I know Damien has been, he's been a bit of a shit his, his, um, tenure. Entire, his, I was about to say his entire life. His entire existence. Yeah, he was entitled, he was, uh, he was entitled. He was, you know, brought up to think, you know, he was the best. And what's good is, what's really cool about him now is learning and working from, uh, for Batman. He has a chance to get there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, So it says, uh, here's the thing. If you're fighting alongside Superman, you have to step up. You have to be better. It's just the way it is. And if you can't do this the right way, you'll probably just find yourself in a cell on the other side of the world faster than you can blink. Um, so Superman takes Jay to the Fortress of Solitude. He has a gift for him from the future. Uh, it's a Legion ring. Uh, it's a suit and a Legion ring. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, he wants, uh, he gives him a Legion ring so he can fly. And then he flies him high above Gamora. And they have a nice little conversation here, and I like this. He says, uh, right, you're Superman. You're practically programmed to catch people who are falling, not so good with letting go. Is he supposed to drop him? And he says, it's okay. I'll let go for you. And he phases out and drops. Which I thought was a nice exchange. It was. And, and he falls through the shield. And he flies, flies right through the building, and there are um, there are soldiers there. Jay makes his way in, um, and this is a nice, this is a really cool scene here because he says uh, he he comes in and there's a whole bunch of people, and he says hi, we're going to free Gamora, but we need the shield down. This is our one chance to to be free of Bendix. I'm asking you to choose between our dictator and our country. And one of the scientists, she pushes the button, says, destroy Bendix, and drops the shield. And the shield is down. And Superman nice. flies in under the water, removes the submarine from the water, and flies it into Gamora. Where and here rev- comes the revolutionaries. Yup. And Damien. Um, they're fighting, they're, you know, defending, and Dreamer catches a vision. And she says, fine, Jay, he needs you. He's invulnerable, not to this. He flies in, 
sees what Jay sees, and it's prisoner one. It's his mother. It's pretty messed up, too. Yeah. Especially the way she looks. Like, I mean, out of I'm a fan of all of the art throughout this book, but the 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 picture the the last page of her. Um, it reminds me of weird. <laughs> it reminds me of like Lady Deathstrike meets the way they did Cyborg Superman slash Zor El in the New Fifty Two. Ah, uh, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah. And a little bit, a little bit. If you've ever read American Vampire stuff, like the way they do their claws. All right, to our final book. Action, ten forty-five. Yeah, there's a. Um, <laughs> once we get there, my favorite bit is kind of the very end. Mm-hmm. And the, the whole story is good. The whole issue is really good. Well, take us there, Skitch. <laughs> um, so it just, it opens, you know, fighting, uh, battling. Um, there's, it seems like uh, the rebellion is kind of being defeated, you know? Um, that's how they're, that's how they're talking, Um like things are coming after them and they, they just didn't stand a chance. Um, the machine, uh, that was, uh, darling, the machine that kind of carried orphan. Um, and then we've got OMAC here, um, going after people. Hey, speaking of here, somebody's here who wants to say hi. Real quick. Hi, it's me, Sayla. Hey, Sayla. I just, she just wanted to say hi, James, and then she's going to bed. Back to All bed. All right. Good night. James, now I'm going to go to sleep. I have to get my kitty. Oh, uh-huh. good night. No worry. All right, Sailor. Oh, no. We got a new kitty named Galaxy. So we have a new cat named Galaxy. Uh-huh. It's her kitty. Now, back to... Things being destroyed on Apocalypse, or not Apocalypse, on World World War World. War World. Gosh, um, I can't talk. And the next page is Apollo. Apollo is is blasting and destroying stuff as well. And then we get the streak, and it's. Uh, it's uh, not you running around at night after, to the quad with everybody. This is not the, the tank. naked mile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is uh, Black Razor. Was that the name of it? Yeah. Um, something like that. Yeah. Um, and then we got, like, Superman and his uh, Rebel Council, um, Midnighter, Natasha, um, Manchester, um, and some others, um, some people from War World, some of the other... Uh, War zones, almost as it were. Yes. Um, they're talking about uh, everything that's going on. Um, we're not going to blow up a Star Forge. Um, so they want to turn a Star Forge um, into something that will power up the Felosians. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Theoretically. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, he's got, it's just a lot, at, at this point, they're, they're doing a lot of talking, you know, um, there, there's some fighting, uh, like Crylux is kind of almost giving in, like it seems like they've almost, like they're being, uh, they're being driven back. Um, uh, Midnighter says you should take the kids with you because they're going to um, go down and look for uh, what was it the flame of a gund or something yeah something like that after a while sometimes the stuff uh, a, a lot I of just... yeah, well it's a lot of alien names you know what I mean um 
So uh, Omac is trying to get through to Laya. Um, she's talking to her, saying that she came here for her. Um, she's just she's wondering if she's even in there, and wondering what Superman would do. Um, so they, uh, as they get down there, like orphan, they they come across the teacher, and they come across Darling, the the robot. Mm-hmm. Um, this is when they go to, uh, they go to a Star Forge, and. You know, they, they make their move on the Star Forge and they get, um, and they run into Teacher and Darling. Um, uh, Superman is taking the kids. Um, they want, they're talking to him. They want to go to Earth. Um, he says, uh, both of you will always be welcome anywhere I am. And I know Krylux feels the same. Um, Which is awesome. Yeah, and he says, there aren't many Kryptonians left, but I know that every one of them will see you like family, and the other Felosians as well. I expect you'll both wear your own family sigil one day, but this one is yours as long as you want it. Um, so they are in the heart of the necropolis, um, talking about the passageways, uh, they, they keep changing, you know. Um, and then we've got Byla here, the storyteller. Um, That'll be my job, just telling stories. <laughs> While you're out fighting with an axe. <laughs> the bloodless, bloodless blade. Um, he says, you know me perfectly well. I'm a storyteller and a friend to children, but a servant also, a servant of the gods of the first world, created to hide and protect this necropolis. Uh, for within it lies a living remnant of Olgrun, god of gods. That remnant is his fire, the fire that once drove him to become as he became, the fire from which all war world grew. He says, my task was to repel all who would follow Olgren's path and to aid the one who would redeem him. Is that you, Superman of Earth? Um, and we've got uh, the battle raging. Um, Natasha fighting Darling. Um, he says, uh, Clark says, and let me do what I came here to do. Um, Your mom. It's going down. So step forward and prove yourself to the master of war world. And uh, seems to transform into some kind of monster. This is next, the trials of Olgrim. Um, and we got you're just, you're, you're like, all right, Olgrim. Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we've got a world without Clark Kent. This is the backup story. Which I'm actually enjoying because, you know, the problem is sometimes with backups, a lot of times I don't enjoy backups. Well, and a lot of times they don't even pertain to the story being told. Um, yeah. Like before with Martian Manhunter, it didn't strike me that it that it pertained to the story being told. It was He was just there. Yep. It was just to tell a Martian Manhunter story. Yeah, but this actually pertains to the story being told um, weeks earlier. Uh, so they have the Genesis, um, the piece of Genesis, and they are trying to um, use the radiation, the energy, to heal Thaola. Um, she's kind of she's she's dying, and he's communicating with Natasha on Warworld. And through talking with each other, um, they have, um, uh, they have learned that they can, um, use a reactor to filter the Genesis safely, um, and they use it to start powering up Thala, 
Um, this, is the, this reactor is the answer. Um, we have so much to do, we'll have to build our own reactor on War World. Um, so that's kind of what they're doing with the Star Forge. So this kind of leads into, you know, what she was saying on, um, on War World. Um, then they get, uh, they get interrupted and steel. See now this here, this, this version of steel, mm -hmm. the suit kind of materializes over him, kind of like mm -hmm. nano, uh, kind of like nanobots and stuff. I mean, they already did this with, um, Supergirl gave her a nanobot suit. You know what I mean? So they could do this for John Henry Irons on Superman and Lois. That was my biggest disappointment with Superman Lois season two was the fact they didn't advance steel in any way. Yeah. The only advance of steel that they made was Natasha's suit was better than his. Um, he didn't get a new suit. So conduit who we saw at the last, at, at the end of part one, um, that, uh, Amanda Waller employed, um, he he attacks, um, he attacks uh, Steel and Lois, um, and he breaks in and to steal the Genesis fragments. Sorry to break up the science fair, but this rock's a threat to national security, and it never belonged to you anyway. I never claimed the Genesis fragment was mine, but it's definitely not yours. Um, so they have a fight. Lois gets. Uh, Lois gets a um, a weapon, and they all start fighting against him. Start fighting against Conduit. Um, he somehow <laughs> escapes with the fragment. Um, John says, without the fragment, Theola, Natasha, and Superman's revolution are dead in the water. Um, Conduit's got no idea what he just brought down on himself. And this was kind of my favorite part here. The last page, um, she got on her watch and she calls, she says, John, Kara, Connor, Kong Keenan, Clark needs us, all of us. I love that they brought, uh, Kong Keenan back. Yeah, so did I. I thought that was awesome. They, uh. You know, he haven't seen him since the new 52, since the new Superman book. That was a good book. It was so, like, connected, but yet just slightly outside of what was going on. It made a very interesting read. Yeah, so... And hit the whole Superman of China thing was interesting just because we should review that one day, honestly. Yeah, um, we'll definitely have to get into that. Because it was a whole different philosophy, and it was like he was using Superman, but it was like his own character. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. But we got the whole Superman and Superman extended family here, you know? Got John, Kara, Connor, Kong Keenan, and Steel. That's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, we we have been reading those, like, kid books like the super family adventures. We just finished them mm -hmm. and those books are great, man. And they are definitely something that should be the basis of just a fun, like 10 minute episode cartoon network type show. So, um, all right. So James talk about, um, we're running here. Some Superboy We've been watched and watching. You can't even talk anymore. <laughs> um, well I watched, uh, Season two, episode eight, nine, and ten. Um, episode eight was Mister and Mrs. Superboy. Um, we get Mister Mixus Pitalik. Um, yeah, we do. The only yeah. cool-looking villain of the entire series. <laughs> so far, so far, so far. Superboy and Lana pretend to be the adoptive parents of Mr. Mixus Pitalik when he returns from the fifth dimension to stop havoc caused by a giant follows him seeking revenge. Seeking revenge because he played a trick on him. Uh, played a prank on him. And it was kind of cool, you know? I mean, you got... Uh, and they gave him a, a fifth dimensional name, Vol Volkabach. 
Volkbach or Volkbacher, something. Yeah, um, but it was uh, it was it was the big dude from Happy Gilmore who's got the nail in his head. <laughs> yeah, he was like, well, he was also a Jaws and James Bond. Like he was, oh, you yeah, know, he's been in all kinds of stuff. Um, but Happy Gilmore's great because he's not the bad evil guy that you're used to, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, it was, I mean, that was a funny episode. I mean, it's always great to, you know, it's usually great to see a version of Mixopitalic and, um, they've, uh, they've got the guy who plays him. He's just, he's so memorable. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's a great, like literal comic translation of the character. Yeah. No, no, you know. Oh, we're gonna, you know, try to modernize it. We're gonna try to do this for the show. It really is a translation from comic to live action. Oh yeah, he had the bowler hat. He had the little tunic and stuff on. Like it was, it was a really cool translation. I liked it. You know, honestly, the only thing that comes close to it is, um, uh, what is it, Tom, Tom Len- Thomas Lennon. Yeah, Thomas Lennon, the yeah. most recent on Supergirl, on Supergirl. when they soft rebooted. Makes his pedal look. Yeah, well, yeah. he's got that energy though. He just has that. He does. He he, and and that's why he was so good. You know, I mean, he's great in so many things. He he's one of those actors that you wouldn't know him by name, but he appears in so much in little places, and you're like, oh yeah, that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, I mean, he's in I Love You, Man. We were just talking about that a little bit ago. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> um, so, episode nine, um, programs so episode, for death. So this one, okay. So what's funny is all the episodes before this one, I started watching back when I had DC Universe. And then I had to go back and rewatch with this ring IV wed or the IV kill. And... So then I started uh, watching them, and I was like, uh, and I was like, man, I've watched all this. Where did I leave off? And I jumped to this one, Program to Death. So this is because I remember Mr. and Mrs. Superboy. So I was like, ah, so I jumped to Program for Death, and that's where I've been binging from here on out. And I just totally, uh, this one is Superboy must stop a robot that has reprogrammed itself to avenge the death of its creator by killing both Andy and his father. So Andy's father is a computer programmer, which was probably something so like, oh my gosh, that sounds so, wow, like sci-fi and crazy. Like what is a computer programmer? Right. Especially at that time. Yeah. Exactly. Now we're just like, okay, big deal, dude. Right. (laughs) Like, oh, that just, that's just uh, par for the course these days. Every, you go to every, ITT Tech. I was going to say every other freaking character on these CW shows, every other tech person, their parent is a tech villain. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, come on. Like, <laughs> nowadays it's a trope. Um, I mean, honestly, in that one, you know, nothing highly memorable. Honestly, the two things that stood out to me was Andy got a haircut and um, – and like he's more blonde <laughs> and uh uh superboy kind of being affected by electricity 20 million volts but he's still still kicking you know it was kind of like superboy takes on the terminator in a way <laughs> i think you know like been a better fight <laughs> one thing about this show like i said this to my friend anthony was i kind of feel like this is this show is like in the same vein of Power Rangers. Oh, absolutely. It has that same feel. And once like you kind of get your mind around that, it just makes it so much easier to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, and you know what? Sad to say, that's kind of how the last couple of seasons of things on the CW have felt. Very Power Rangers. I mean, it's, <laughs> The thing the CW is, I'm just going to say this, and we go back to it, is they've gotten so much away from the main character and focused so much on the side characters, but they're not even side characters we care about. And that's the problem with The Flash is, you know, Joe's taking a step back. Iris, I, I've never really liked Iris. 
it's like just the way they've done her and everything. And it's not her portrayal. Uh, like it's not the right, actress. Right. It's, it's just how they wrote her character yeah. a lot of times. Like first season wasn't bad and then it just got weird. I don't know. It's just, and they stop making the hero rely on themselves and work. They have to be part of the team and they have to downplay the hero just so that the team can have something to do. Yeah. Which is and like, and, right, and like right now, like Chester's all right, but he's no Cisco. And I don't really care what Allegra's doing. And we lost Tom Cavanaugh. Like, he was such a great part of what kind of, you know, Wells was he playing this season. Um, And you just, you don't have that wow factor with The Flash. Like, go back and watch the first two seasons of The Flash. Mm, It's amazing. Right. But we're talking about some Superboy here. Um, And Superboy Season 2, Episode Sorry, episode 10, Superboy's Deadly Touch. Um, we get a return of Lex Luthor in this episode. Sherman Howard, he's back. Could see it was a man in a suit from, like, the sky view. So, like, when Superboy was looking at him straight in the face, I was like, this is just horrible. <laughs> but it's it's fun. No, it is, it is. It's is. I'm just saying, like, how, like, no, like that's the, like, he's not hiding from him like that. Um, so it was more, it was horrible in a, in a funny laugh, laugh at it kind of way. Um, uh, but he touches, he touches the bus and he triggers a beam that turns out to soup overpower Superboy, um, supercharge Superboy. Um, so he's like extremely hot. He's burning things with a touch. Um, he can't control his powers. His hearing is hurting him. He's burning holes in things with his heat vision. Um, it's James on a Friday night. (laughs) Ah. Too hot to touch. Uh, (laughs) but that's why we're doing this on a Thursday night. Exactly. (laughs) Couldn't. I'll try to talk to him tomorrow. It's just it'd be anarchy. Yeah. Uh so yeah, it was um it was an interesting episode. Uh some of the effects, you know, like the way his heat vision wasn't going where he was looking was kind of funny. Um the uh the the gloves and the headgear they put on him. <laughs> I got a good laugh when it came back from break or whatever. And it was, and he was wearing those. Yeah. Um, I thought that was, uh, kind of hilarious. Um, and they, they cure him by absorbing the, the excess energy off of him using plutonium rods. It's so much, it's so funny how much back then, like you could say something like that, and uh, we just be like, yeah, wow, that's super crazy science. And now we're just like, yeah, we know too much about stuff, <laughs> right? Like you got to do your research now. Um, you can't just use these science words and be like, people won't understand. Yeah. So Lex's plan was to supercharge Superboy and to. Um, to get a pardon for his crimes, he would cure Superboy. Well, they found the cure, and he didn't have to cure Superboy, so he did not get his pardon. No, he did not, and he was not happy about that. He was not happy, but luckily, he had a life model decoy. (laughs) That was there to... (laughs) That was there to take his place and not get arrested. It's so weird. Like, this Lex is so unbalanced. He is. Just, be, just because, like, he's just, you just accept it, like, uh, what he's up to, and you're just like, okay. I didn't really know you were that smart, but okay. Yep. And that's the Superboy that I watched. Um, honestly, my favorite was Mixus Pitalik. Yeah. Uh, Definitely my favorite episode of the three that I just, that we just watched. Um, 
it's kind of funny, you know, in that one, Superboy, I forget what he did, like hit him or something, Volkabach, and sent him flying out the window. And you got this big guy in this big hole in the ground, something you can see that they like dug and shaped. And he's just laying there unconscious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, he was dressed like a big kid, that giant dude. He's dressed like just like some big kid. I, yeah. yeah, you gotta you gotta tread lightly with the fifth dimensional stuff. That's all I gotta say. All right, so you've watched up to episode eleven. Yep, that's the next one. All right, next three I'll be going into eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Sounds good. We'll keep up. Everyone can kind of get an idea where we're we're going with our. Superboy watching. Mm-hmm. But so all right, everybody. We got some we got caught up on our comics. We're chatting some Superboy. We just wanna keep it going with some fun topics and Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for listening. And join us next time where we'll continue the good times and we won't be exhausted because we have young children who don't let us sleep. I don't know about that. Like <laughs> you have a baby. You have the youngest of us all. Right. He's like, dang it, Tyler's right. <laughs> you know what? She wasn't she wasn't making a whole lot of noise this time. That's because I'm talking and she's like, ah, Tyler, there he is. Yeah. She's like, oh, listen to that voice. <laughs> she wants to go back to being a player named Gus. <laughs> Alright, let's get out of here. I'm getting late. I'm getting tired. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. Listen, send us a message. Uh, you can find us on all of our social media. Send us an email at cryptonreportpod at gmail.com. Look for us at cryptonreportpod on Twitter. And hey, remember, why don't you press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network? Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month, and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us, and then listen in. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to The Krypton Report. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. And if you want to keep Krypton from exploding, join our $1 a month Patreon. That's right. For $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show. Like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash krypton report.